In 2012, Mia was diagnosed with a childhood cancer called neuroblastoma. We had actually completed treatment and we were at home, but she was having her central line access daily for TPN. On this particular night when Mia went to bed with a cold, we were woken early, 6 a.m. by Mia with rigors. She was shaking uncontrollably. She was delusional. She was cold peripherally. Um, but she had a burning hot head and as you do, you take the temperature straight away. Anything above 38 degrees, you're straight to the hospital. This was something that had happened to Mia a few times and probably to many other patients, but on this particular day, I was not aware that she was septic. Sepsis is, uh, is a silent killer, really, uh, in all ages, and particularly in the paediatric group. There's been a worldwide push to recognise sepsis early and treat it, and that's the way you save lives in, in sepsis. Mia presented and looked very unwell, and right from the moment of triage, the triage nurse identified that her heart was going very fast, she was very pale, she was quite, uh, quite febrile, and really looked quite unwell. She was put into our resuscitation area, and very quickly the staff recognised that she had sepsis. I think taking into consideration she was an oncology patient with a central line, which is a foreign body and can have an infection, they were very quick to act on the symptoms she presented with. That, I think, enabled them to make an executive decision that this could be a septic case. Unfortunately, we've seen the cases of a number of children around the state who uh, come in very similar to me and looking quite unwell. Um, it's often quite difficult to pinpoint what the problem is for the child with sepsis, and often then people wait and try a few different treatments to see what develops. And then as the child deteriorates, uh, the child's heart rate goes up, their, uh, their perfusion and their uh, alertness reduces, uh, and then eventually they crash, they look really sick and they eventually arrest. And at that point, it's very hard to turn around the, uh, uh, the septic picture. Uh, and often those children uh, have long-term problems or sometimes even die from that. It's very reassuring when the doctors then say that they know what is going on. And in Mia's case, they said that she had blood poisoning and they would be taking cultures to find out what type of bug. In the meantime, they would be starting antibiotics immediately and not waiting for the results. The CEC sepsis pathway for children in emergency department has taken a disease which is often difficult to recognise. People are often unsure of whether to treat or whether to wait and see what happens. And given them a tool which tells them how to recognise it and uh, what to do in the response, how to resuscitate the child and where to refer the child to. So it really is a, a tool to tell you what to do in the first hour of treating sepsis. So the CEC sepsis pathway has enabled us to get some uh, consistency in that um, excellent approach and I think that's something that the Clinical Excellence Commission has brought together for us. The rapid response from the team that allowed the antibiotics to be administered within the hour definitely saved Mia's life that day.